Hi everyone, this is Giacomo Vacari and I'm here today to show you a really really simple way of debugging your game um, just by creating a text to debug whatever data you need to read, variables, uh, inputs, etc. So let me show you what I mean by that. So in this prototype that I'm working on, I have several inputs here and data that I need to read. And so I showed this to my friend Max and he's an awesome programmer. Uh, he asked me how to do this because of course, like all programmers know, it's simple once you know how to do it. <laughs> so basically, I'm just gonna show you how to create uh, a debug 2D widget that will show you any data that you need to get, let's say from your player. So for this example, I'm gonna create a debug system that you can turn on and off very simply, and that will show you, for example, in this case, the health of my player which goes from 0 to 1000. So let's get to it. This is extremely simple. What you want to do is start by creating the widget blueprint that you want to use. And I'm going to call it Max because he gave me the idea for this tutorial. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text over here on the left center side of my screen that is going to say the back system and my player health and I'm going to activate that. So we have the blueprint here, the widget blueprint, and because I'm going to have several textes, in this case only two, but still, I'm going to create a vertical box to hold all my textes inside. And this is very, very important. I want to anchor that so that, well, this is not important, just the alignment. I'm a little bit picky about that. Um, so you want to anchor it because that way you make sure that whenever the resolution changes, the places of the of the widget or whatever content is in there is not going to change with your screen resolution, the size and stuff, right? Now I'm going to create two textes inside that are like children for that vertical box. And the first one is going to say the back system so that I know what I'm reading. This is very simple, but very important. Now, this text block here is going to be player health. And I'm going to bind this value to the actual player health. Now, why do I put the text here if it's going to change anyway whenever you are reading the player health? Because it's easier to read. Whatever text you bind here is not going to be uh, updated on the designer screen. So I need to know what I'm looking at without the value being there, right? Well, this is just me. I like to make this a little bit prettier. Now, I'm going to compile and save. And the first thing I want to test is that this is going to appear on my screen whenever I need it. So now there's no way for us to put it there. So I'm going to do it on the level blueprint because I use that to test mechanics, basically. And uh, well, this is very simple, and then if you want to keep it, you can play in your, put it on your player controller or like your debug system, whatever you're doing. But this is very simple to create, uh, you know, a debug system right now. So, very important, create widget. I want to create my Clax that I called after Max. So, widget blueprint Max. I'm not sure if I need the only player now. Let's try that. And... Once we've created that, we want to add it to the viewport. There we go. And, well, we're going to need to destroy it at some point. If we want to turn it on and off, so we're going to use a flip-flop. This is not ideal. Um, usually what I do is in the game instance or the game state, depending what I'm doing, I'm going to save that value and I'm going to destroy it that way. But just for quickness sake, we're just going to remove it from its parent directly. This works. This is fine. It's just not very well encapsulated. It's not very pretty, but whatever. You know, it works. So let's see if it works. Yep. So I press 7 on my number, uh, number pad. It appears and it goes off. But right now it's not doing anything because, I mean, I get hurt and my, or I, fi I help heal myself and nothing happens. And that's because we haven't binded yet this value. So we're going to create a binding. I'm going really quick, I'm sorry. Just create binding. Right, I have one created. 
right? I mean, this is just because I did it twice. It doesn't matter. We could technically just change the name or whatever. Okay, so let's it's text health. For example, and we're gonna delete this old one, right? Let's compile and see if there's no problems. Seems so. Yeah, get text health. Okay, perfect. Now, what I want to do, uh, you may want to get a lot of different data from here. I mean, you can get anything you want, really, but uh, in this case, we're going to get the player pawn because I want to know my health. I only have one player right now, so, and I'm going to cost it to my player class. You could do a lot of things here. You could choose between different blueprints you could do a lot of things but uh, right now I just want to do the simplest thing so you guys can understand it very easily so I'm gonna get up oh, it's not called health it's gonna it's called life so I have my player life variable inside my player uh, class and I want to get that data now this class is never gonna fail in principle because we're getting the player pawn there's only one we're going to cast it to him, and if he doesn't exist, basically it means that nothing exists because we just killed the player and I'm going to delete all the widgets and I'm going to remove them, so nothing to worry about right now. Now, you could just do this and get the player life as a number, that's fine, but there's going to be a problem because, well, let's do it, because you're going to see, I mean, this works, you get the value, and as you see here, it changes. I'm going to hurt myself a few times. You're going to see it, and then I'm going to heal myself. There you go. So it's lurping between values, and there we go, right? But that's fine now. But whenever you get these many god things in there, you're not going to know what anything of that is. So let's just very quickly, very simply create an append string, and we're going to set it up here. And this sucks because we have to convert to string um, back to text and all of this, and I hate that. But I wonder if we can do this actually. Oh, yeah, we can actually. Ah, that's nice. One less transformation. So we don't need to do this. We can just do that. Okay, cool. So I'm, I'm going to say player health space, and I'm going to do that. Okay, cool. Well, that's one way of doing it. I'm sure there's more. So, let's make this a little bit prettier. Whoop. Yeah, that's not what I wanted, but more like this. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Okay, cool. So, now it's pretty clear. Anyone who reads our code will be able to see, hey, well, okay, what's he doing? So, he comes here. He gets health. Where is that? Let's check it out. Okay, cool. So he gets the player pawn, he casts to that class, he gets the variable from the inside, he turns it, he appends it to player health to make it readable, and he returns it. Okay, wonderful. Great. So we press 7 and we got it working. It's really that simple. Now I can take it out and you can control that. Let's say that you have an option in your debug mode or like your options menu and you say debug and just turn it on and on from the game instance uh, well read the data from the game instance and set it on the game state or whatever that's up to you this is just the simplest way to do it right now um, I know that some of you will be interested in this so I'm gonna add a progress bar in there and why would I want to do that because it might be cooler to region a progress bar on player health right so I'm gonna Call it player health as well. Maybe you should say bar just in case. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna bind it, but with one small detail. I'm gonna copy and paste this. You could create a function. I'm just going really fast for you guys. I know you are busy and you want to know how to do this as quick as possible. So now, we're going to get, we don't need this, because we're not speaking to health texts or strings anymore. Now we want a return value of float. This is an integer, so we're going to send it to a float. Very simple. And now, this variable from here goes from, one, from 0, I'm sorry, to 1000. So what we want to do is normalize it to a range of 0 and 1000, because 
This percentage, this value expects, expects a number from 0 to 1, which is 0 to 100%. So now we're going to normalize this. We're going to connect it. That's okay. It's not, it's not too unorganized yet. Let's save it, play it. And now we have our bar. And when I heal myself, it also fixes itself. I'm lerping through values, so that's a little bit prettier. And that's the simplest way of making a debug system, just like this. So I hope that's useful to you guys. If you need any more information on how to expand on that, there's lots of things that you can do with that. So, but basically the gist of it is you're gonna create a widget, you're gonna put it on screen, you're gonna add it to the viewport, and then you're gonna read variables from whatever you need, and you're gonna bind them to whatever text or percentage or anything that you need, and you're gonna put that on screen. Alright guys, hope that's useful. Take care and see you soon.